Good morning. Good morning. My name is Buck Blanchard, and I'm the Director of Mission and Outreach for the Diocese of Virginia, so I'm on the bishop's staff, and I work with churches around the Diocese of Virginia to get them more involved in mission and outreach efforts locally, nationally, and internationally. And I bring greetings this morning from all three of our bishops and from the entire staff of the Diocese of Virginia. It's a pleasure to be here. Kim, I really appreciate the invitation. And uh, thank you so much for your warm welcome. Yesterday morning, I came down to breakfast with my wife, who's an Episcopal priest. And I mentioned that I would be coming here this morning and had been asked to give the sermon. Now, my wife's not only an Episcopal priest, but she's a real stickler for liturgy and canons and all the things that Episcopal priests really get excited about. So she said, do you know what Sunday is? Do you know what tomorrow is? And unfortunately, at the time, I didn't have this wonderful bulletin that you put out that clearly says, Fifth Sunday in Lent, huge <laughs> letters on the front. So I knew I was being tested. I thought, well, it's the something Sunday of Lent, <clears throat> and maybe it's the second or third Sunday before Easter, but I don't think we count backwards. Or it's the umpteenth Sunday after Epiphany. I was really struggling, trying to figure out what it was that she was testing me on. And she smiled and said, no, tomorrow is St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> St. Patrick. Now we all know St. Patrick and what he's all about, right? He came to Ireland, he got rid of the snakes, he's a saint, we drink green beer, and we pinch each other on St. Patrick's Day. But who was St. Patrick? Well, to begin with, he's the patron saint of Ireland, except he wasn't Irish. He was born in Roman England, and when he was about 17 years old, he was kidnapped and taken to Ireland and was forced into slavery. Most stories say he was a shepherd. And sometime a few years later, he escaped and found his way to France and then, according to some stories, eventually to Rome. And when he was at the point where he had developed a ministry and was ready to take it out to the world, he said, I would like to go back to Ireland with my ministry. I'd like to go back to the place that I was a slave. He goes back there, and then the rest of the story we know. He becomes a very famous priest, ultimately becomes a bishop, and the rest, as they say, is history. He died on this day, March 17th, in the year 460 AD. Now, imagine if Patrick had decided not to go back to Ireland. Suppose he decided he was going to stay in France. He was going to have a family. They were going to live in France. Not a bad place to live. He would have stayed there and had a, had a perfectly wonderful life, perhaps. And we never would know anything about him. He wouldn't be someone we celebrate. He probably wouldn't have been a saint. And we probably wouldn't be pinching each other on St. Patrick's Day. What makes Patrick special is not his birthplace, or chasing snakes, or even wearing green. What makes Patrick special is that he was willing to travel to the harshest of all the places, the place where he was enslaved, in order to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. So when God said go, Patrick said yes. And that's why we're here. Now, Patrick had a pretty good role model for that. <clears throat> we'll touch on it in today's gospel. Think about the way the gospel starts today. Jesus and his disciples <clears throat> are on the way to Bethany. But think now about how many gospel stories start out just that way. Think about it. Jesus and his disciples are on the road to Jericho. The next story, they are on their way to Judea or Samaria, or they're going 
up to Jerusalem. It took me a long time to figure out that the reason you go from Galilee south and go up to Jerusalem is that you're actually going up in the mountains. 